All right, so uh, section 2.4 is uh, about taking derivatives using what's called a chain rule, okay? Um, so a chain rule means that you have multiple functions, uh, sometimes just one function embedded inside another, or sometimes multiple functions embedded inside of another. So it, it kind of think of it like uh, when you have composition of functions and um, you have to take derivatives piece by piece. So they call it a chain rule. Um, and uh, I'll give you an example of what these look like, okay? Um, so let's see. Real quick example. So we're going to want to differentiate. Um, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, this requires a chain rule. Now, the reason why it requires a chain rule is because if you notice inside of a parenthesis, inside the parenthesis, there is a quadratic function. Okay, x squared plus 1. But on the outside of the parenthesis, there's a radical function. Right? So this is a function composed of two functions. There's a square root and there's a, a, per, a parabolic function function in there, right? x squared plus 1 and x to the half. So the way you do this is by using the chain rule. Okay, so the way we do the chain rule for this, um, let me just write f of x equal to this. So I'm just giving it a, an actual value. So f of x is going to equal to that. f prime of x is going to be the following. Now remember how to do the power rule. What was I supposed to do first? If I were just to do a power rule. I, I bring down what? All right, the power, so that's half, right? Now I'm going to keep the inside the same. And then what was I supposed to do to the power? Subtract one, so I get negative half, right? Now if you do that, um, that's that's all well and good, but you're not done. Okay, so this is the chain rule that's about to happen right now. You're supposed to take a derivative of the inside next. Okay, so first you take a derivative of the power, then you take a derivative of the inside of the function. And there can be there can be other parts in there. There could be like trig functions that have quadratics within them that have powers raised. So you can have three, four, uh, five chains or the more popular two chains, um, whatever, right? You can have mostly two chains is what you tend to get. Okay. But there are three chains, sometimes four chains, etc. So um, anyway, so let's take the derivative of that. We have one half. This will be x squared plus 1 to the negative half times, well, that derivative is 2x. Well, half times 2 is going to cancel. So what I end up getting is x over the square root of x squared plus 1. And that's my chain rule. Okay. So notice it kind of looks like your power rule that you started off with, but we have more on the inside. It's not just an x, right? It's not just x to the one half. It's it's an x squared plus one on the inside. So you're going to want to do the power rule like normal, but then once you're done doing the power rule like normal, you have to take a derivative of the inside as well. Okay? So it's kind of like working outside in, right? Working from the outside in. So, let me give you the definition for the chain rule. So, um, given the fact that you have two functions that are differentiable, okay, let's just call them f and g, okay? So, let's just say, uh, let f and g be differentiable functions of x. In other words, 
um, f and g are composed of x, meaning there's x's in the equations, okay? So let f and g be differentiable functions of x. Then you can do the following. So d dx of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. All right, so in other words, take a derivative of the outside function. Normally, we call that the power rule, okay? A lot of times, they'll call this use the power rule first, and then you take the derivative of the inside. All right, now it's not always the power rule, but sometimes, I'm gonna say like maybe 90% of the time, it is gonna be the power rule. So, let me show you a different thing here. Another example. All right, so we're gonna find a given f of x equal to sine of three x squared plus six x. Find f prime of x. So do me a favor, try this out. Cause notice this one doesn't require a power rule but you do take a derivative of an outer function. So try to figure out what is the outer function they're talking about and take a derivative, see if you can figure it out. And right now we'll, we'll go through and, uh, and do it, okay? I'm gonna pause the video just so I can give you like a minute or so. All right, so what's the first thing I'm gonna wanna take a derivative of here? Sine, yeah, sine, because notice the main function is a trigonometric function, but within the angle of the trig function, we have a quadratic, right? 3x squared plus 6x. So the inner function is a quadratic function. The outer function is a trig function, okay? So f prime of x, the derivative of sine, cosine. And remember, just rewrite the inside times the derivative. Now, I usually don't do this whenever I do the work myself. I, I no longer write ddx of whatever. I'm just doing it right now for the example's sake. 3x squared plus 6x. <clears throat> okay. And um, let me kind of write this out again. Cosine of 3x squared plus 6x times. What's the derivative of uh, 3x squared plus 6x? All right, so 6x plus 6. So if you kind of want to just write it out, 6 times x plus 1 cosine of 3x squared plus 6x. And that would be your answer. This is your chain rule. Okay, so f prime of x is that. So they can try to make it a little bit more complicated for you. <clears throat> and usually whenever they get these things to get more complicated, there's always trig involved. So let me give you one of these and I'll give you a little bit of time to try it out. Uh, find. I'm going to change the, the notation here for us. Find y prime if y is equal to cosine to the fourth of 3t. So try that out. And uh, again, right now I'll start recording again after a minute or so. 
So what is what is the outermost function for this? A what? Cosine? Uh, no, that's actually the middle function. The outermost function is actually the power of 4, a quartic. Okay, so y equal to, I can actually write it like this. Right? That's the same thing. You see how the quartic power is the outermost function? Then as you move in, you have a cosine. And then within the cosine, you have a linear function, 3t. This is where chain rules get a little complicated, right? Because sometimes you have multiple functions existing within one problem. Okay? So how would I do this? Well, y prime is... Notice there's a power of 4 on the outside, right? Now, you can do this with or without taking it out the way I did there. I'm just trying to make it obvious that it's there. I usually don't rewrite it, though. Um, so I'm going to take that 4 and bring it down. And that's going to give me cosine of 3t to the third, right? Times d dt of cosine of 3t. Now again, I usually don't write that now. I'm, I'm used to doing this in my head, but at first this is the way I used to do it. So notice the 4 cosine of 3t to the third is done. Now I got to take the derivative of cosine of 3t. But remember, cosine of 3t is a chain rule because it's a trig function with a linear function inside. Okay, so y prime is 4 cosine cubed of 3t times the derivative of cosine is negative sine of 3t. <clears throat> but after I take a derivative cosine, I still have to do the derivative of 3t. So the derivative of 3t is 3, right? So y prime equals to negative 4 cosine cubed of 3t sine of 3t times 3. So the answer is negative 12 cosine cubed of 3t sine of 3t. That's your chain rule. So chain rules can be kind of easy sometimes. Sometimes it could be very complicated. So you just got to take your time with it. Just be able to identify outer function, inner function. Sometimes you have outer, middle, inner. Uh, usually that only occurs though when you have trig. So the trig functions tend to complicate things a little bit more at times. Okay, go ahead. Right here? It's because, remember, for the first step, I only dealt with the power. So once I brought the power down and subtracted by 1, I just had to rewrite this, right? But then your next step is to take a derivative of that piece that I underlined. You got to take the derivative of the inner function. Well, because the derivative of cosine 3t is sine of 3t, but then I have to take the derivative of that next. It's piece by piece. You're doing it piece by piece. So you have to, you have to be able to take derivatives of these things from their outer function to their inner function. And if you notice, um, 
cosine of 3t, the main function is this. Okay? But on the inside, we have that. Right? We have a linear function as an angle. And then we have a trigonometric function as the base function. So there are two functions in there. Correct. It's a quartic that has a trigonometric and a linear inside the trigonometric. So yeah, these are the ones that get really weird. Uh, every time you have trig, that's usually when you get these weird answers. So let's... Uh, Let's do with the last example here. So we're going to find all the points uh, for f of x equal to x squared minus 4 in a square root <clears throat> for which f prime of x equals 0 or f prime of x does not exist. So in other words, when does the derivative equal zero? When does it not exist? So let me just rewrite the original equation here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify it for myself. I'm gonna put it as a half power. So notice we have a quadratic inside the parentheses, but on the outside, it's a radical, right? So that's two functions. It's a composition of functions. So in order to do this, I need to take a, a derivative using the chain rule. So um, let's go ahead and take that derivative here. f prime of x is... Well, the outer function, the half power, I'm going to bring it out. x squared minus 4 to the negative half. And then times. And then the derivative of uh, x squared minus 4 is 2x. So notice I didn't write d dx of x squared minus 4 this time. Okay, I just did it. I just said, okay, it's the, the derivative with the power rule and then the derivative of the inner portion, right? I'm just writing them consistently. I'm not taking the time to write ddx of x squared minus 4, blah, 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 right? Eventually, you want to lose doing that because you're spending an extra step rewriting stuff. Um, so I can cancel out my half and my 2. So f prime of x is equal to x over x squared minus 4 in a square root. So, when does f prime of x equal 0? What makes that function equal 0? Say it louder. You're saying the right answer. Oh, um, no, not that actually makes it undefined, which is good for the other part, but not for the zero. Because if you plug in a, a plus or a minus two, don't you get zero on the bottom? And you're not supposed to divide by zero, right? But I think I heard someone say it over there. What makes the derivative equal to zero? Just look at the numerator. Zero, right? X equals zero makes f prime of x equal zero. So that's that's the only thing that makes it equal to zero. Just look at the numerator, okay? Now, what makes it undefined
I'm going to take your answer of plus or minus 2 as yes, that is true. Are there any other numbers that don't let it exist? Say again? 2, well, 2 won't, negative 2 won't. What else, though? Are there any number other numbers you can plug into the bottom that make it undefined besides 2 and negative 2? Can your square root be negative? No. So what if I plug in a 0? Is that going to work? No, right? Uh, what if I try a 1? Will that work on the bottom? No. So I have a range of numbers. Any number... Uh, from negative 2 to 2. That's going to make it undefined. Okay? So any number from negative 2 to 2 will make it undefined because that's going to make the denominator equal to 0 or imaginary. Right? Because if I plug in a, a negative 1... My answer is uh, negative 3 on the inside, and the square root of negative 3 is radical 3i, right? So it's an imaginary number. So we can't have that. Calculus is based on the, the uh, real numbers and on trigonometry. So, so we got to make sure we stick to the real numbers. Okay? Does that make sense? So... Let me give you guys homework. Um, I'll write it down in the notes, but uh, for now, we're done with this lesson.